This is my latest homemade glitter lamp and I'd like to tell you that it's, I'd like to show you that it's this absolutely stunning emerald green and really sparkly but I'm not sure the camera is actually going to pick that up because um, it really seems to be struggling with monochromatic colours and the reason for that is that this is powered by an LED lamp. Now most of these bases come with a, a tungsten lamp in them and what I've done is I've swapped that out, the, the small Edison screw holder, for a GU10 holder and I am fitting these standard eBay special coloured 3 watt LED lamps with the 3 1 watt LEDs in them. And the heat from the lamps, while not being anywhere near the heat you get from a tungsten lamp, is still enough to make the glitter move quite briskly. And because the LEDs are actually several sharp points of light as opposed to the tungsten lamp which is a fairly linear filament it makes the glitter look really incredibly sparkly so the slightly slower movement is compensated for by the greater sparkliness and you can see the sparkling shining onto the wallpaper behind the lamp and indeed it's shining all over the ceiling and up the walls it's quite surprising really so um, the contents of the lamp are also custom. They are um, a fairly good quality glitter made by a theatrical supplies company called Roscoe. And it comes in these tubs and it's incredibly fine. It flows like almost like liquid inside. It's really attractive glitter. Quite expensive, but you only need a small amount. And believe it or not, these flakes of silver glitter, they're made of polyester. And the size of them is 101, sorry, 1 64th of an inch, which in metric is round about, it's just under half a millimetre. So very small flakes, um, which is why they flow so well and why the lamp is so sparkly. The fact of polyester uh, means they're very rigid and shiny because it's a very good plastic for glitter. There are other plastics that glitter is made from, but this seems a, a really good choice. But the downside of that is the specific gravity of polyester, the weight of it, is 1.39, um, which means that if the polyester was a liquid or for, for volume for volume, um, it weighs 1.38 kilograms per litre. Sorry, I'm European. That's the standard measurements we use. And likewise, water, if you just poured this glitter into water, which has a specific gravity of 1, which means it weighs 1 kilogram per litre, um, the glitter would just instantly flump down to the bottom and stay there and not move. So you have to balance it up by adding a chemical and in this instance I've used calcium chloride which is my current favourite chemical for this. Um, I've been searching for this, the chemical that they use in these glitter lamps for so long, like literally decades. I've just, I've tried so many things and a little bit of inspiration recently just made me try calcium chloride and the thing about calcium chloride is it's quite heavy and it doesn't take much water in it to turn it into a complete liquid. Um, it's very hygroscopic, it really sucks up moisture. So uh, you can get an awful lot of it dissolved in this container. And that's maybe just as well because um, I think there's about half a kilogram in this 500 milliliter container roughly, which is about a pound of the chemical. And I should add, there are different standards of calcium chloride. Uh, the stuff I've used is a fairly squishy, wet stuff called calcium chloride hexahydrate, which suggests it's already got quite a lot of water in it, which kind of feels like I'm being cheated slightly, but uh, I'm not sure. You also get calcium chloride dihydrate. I'm not sure if the difference is just the amount of moisture that's present in them, but certainly the dihydrate stuff is very hard, white and dry, while the stuff I've been getting is quite squishy and slushy. It actually looks and feels a bit like slush. Um, and it's very important to get the most pure version of that you can get. The stuff I got was food grade and I got it off eBay. And it was about four pounds for a kilogram, which is the equivalent of about, say, five or six dollars for two pounds. So, um, it's not that expensive and you don't need an awful lot um, for one of these lamps. This one typically used about £2 worth, which is about $3 worth, so it's not that bad really. 
um, three dollars, some water and a pinch of glitter, really, to make this uh, this glitter vial. Um, there are other plastics you can use, um, other glitters, but that are considerably lighter. Um, but one of the most common available seems to be the polyester. I've not really found too much information on glitter plastics because most people just want to sell you glitter and not give you scientific data about it. Now, this lamp is running at 3 watts versus the 30 watts. It's ultra low power. It's really costing pennies to run. And if I covered that, I, I'm losing track of where I am now. If I mentioned that it's only about a penny or two a day to run, I think I probably have. Um, but this, I, I originally wanted to show you this with a blue LED light underneath, but the camera just would not handle blue. All it showed was a big blob of blue in the middle of the um, screen. It wouldn't uh, show it at all. But this uh, lamp looks fantastic with all the different colours. I mean, white, cold white, warm white, yellow, green, blue, red. It looks fantastic with them all. Um, and the movement is just, it's just really smooth compared to the whoosh of most uh, tungsten glitter lamps. So this is a, a very good alternative to the traditional uh, uh, tungsten glitter lamp. Oh, and here's, here's the important thing, you really have to balance the glitter to the water because um, if it's too heavy, it'll tend to gradually migrate out and settle at the bottom of the lamp. And if that's the case, you have to add more calcium uh, chloride. And if it's too, if the water's too dense with the calcium chloride, the glitter will gradually settle at the top. And the ideal result is to get it so that it's hovering in the middle. It stays suspended for long periods of time. Like you can leave it for a day and there's virtually little, virtually none has settled out. And if, if any has settled out, it should bias slightly to the top so that it gets in, in movement easier because it's e it seems to be easier to get the glitter to move from the top of the um, vial uh, instead of the bottom. So there's a good amount of experimentation involved in that and really we're talking about fine tuning to the level of one drip of water at a time and shaking and leaving. Uh, it does take a bit to fine tune this but once you've got it there um, it takes virtually no ambient heat to make this glitter move. In fact if you just leave it sitting in a windowsill it will just stay in permanent movement due to the influence of uh, ambient room temperature changes and um, sunshine so it's really it's it's great it's a it's a great effect I'm really really happy with this lamp lamp